So it's currently one o'clock in the morning and all the rooms are having movie night. So I'm currently filming inside the shower. That's how dedicated I am. But regardless, it is the go home show for Extreme Rules and we have one more stop in the city of Extreme, which is Philadelphia for Friday Night Smackdown. And whether it was an intense promo between Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair, Seth Rollins calling out Edge for one more match, and Roman Reigns and the Demon proving why this is probably the only match this weekend with an stipulation, and so much more. Welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling, and we are starting with how SmackDown started. Becky Lynch cut water prom. I mean, this girl is so freaking, oh, I was getting yelled at. So freaking talented. She basically comes out there telling the world that Bianca doesn't deserve this match, how she thinks she's better than she really is, and Becky came in at the last possible second to save SmackDown, to save SummerSlam, and she will be the reigning champion coming out of Extreme Rules. Bianca saying that Becky's just too cocky, and Bianca's gonna prove why she is truly the EST. And Becky challenged her a little bit. Becky was like, are you really the EST? Are you really the best? Because if you were the best, you would not have beaten me in 26 seconds on the, well, at the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. There was a little brawl between them, and this was really good. This is actually one of the matches I'm really looking forward to on Sunday just because of the storyline, just the feud. I'm really hoping this match goes 15 minutes because they definitely deserve it after the 26 squash match that they had to do at SummerSlam. But this was really good. A great way to start off SmackDown. And it made you really excited about the pay per view. But from that, we go to the man's man. My guy. So first of all, I was really disappointed because Seth's suit didn't even match. <laughs> Seth had like a red jacket with like a pink shirt on, <laughs> like a completely different color tie. I was like, damn. Seth called out Edge. Seth doesn't want to be called Edge late anymore. Seth wants Edge to admit that he's better than him, you know? Edge beat him at SummerSlam. Seth got the final word last week and him to the hospital. And he said that he's going to go after his kids. He's going to go after Beth. He wants to end Edge in front of his family. And he wants to prove that he is the best in the world and wants Edge to pretty much accept it. And Edge tweeted, he goes, you'll see me next week. But it's not going to go the way you think it's going to go. So this is obviously going to lead. Their final match is going to be at Saudi. I really wish it was a Sunday because I definitely think you could do a lot more with it. But I'm hoping that there's going to be a stipulation in Saudi. I'm hoping for Hell in a Cell, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's either going to be a regular steel cage or just no holds barred. But this this is going to get good. I think Seth needs this win and Saudi. His win-loss record this year has been absolutely crap. And what a way to end his year than this dude and him winning it. But this was a really good part by Seth, you know, really intense. Again, not a fan of this week's suit, but that's okay. But from one shield brother to the next, Roman Reigns proving that he is the bloodline, and the bloodline has the hottest storyline in WWE right now, to which Mondas Ford called Roman Reigns out. You know, Mondas Ford with the Street Profits, they're wrestling the Usos this Sunday, and Mondas won Reigns. And they had this match. And this match is really good. Montez looked amazing. And I'm going to talk about the table box a little bit. So, um, Ma I don't know exactly what Montez was going to do. I think he was supposed to run on the table and just, like, clothesline into Reigns. And Montez gets on the table and the table completely collapsed under him. And Pat McAfee just goes, must have been my fat ass just dancing on the table before. It was so funny. Um... Rowan obviously gets the one with the guillotine and the Usos come out and they're like laying ways to Montez and the lights go out and then the demon, he pops up, he was on the post and he just like jumps on all of them and the demon gets the last word of SmackDown goes off the air. The demon, entering demon this is a lot more interesting because it's a bigger threat to Reigns than just Finn Balor. Um, I'm really excited for this match. Obviously Reigns is not, and Reigns is going to win, the demon is not going to win. Um, Anticipating that Brock's gonna come out at some point during that match to set up for their Saudi match because they announced it two weeks ago. 
But the other thing I'm going to talk about is the home segments and the sound gonna show because I'm just gonna go with my rant. Um, even though, so promo aside, there was a match between Zelina and Liv. There was a match between Natty and Nikki. And then there was a segment between Naomi and Sonya. The two women's matches were three minutes long. You have a two hour show. If Rampage could get more time wrestling in a one hour show than SmackDown with two hours, that's a problem. Um, WWE definitely needs to set this up after the draft because it's just proving my point that the women's division is going backwards and it sucks because they try to emphasize the women's revolution so much, but is it really a women's revolution for having three minute matches and you're cutting matches from TV? No, it's not. But I look, but also, um, not American Alpha, uh, Gable and Otis, I forgot what her tag team name is called, it looks like they're going to go after the Usos next, which is quite interesting. Don't know where we're going to go with that, but that's, that's interesting to me. I don't think they should win the tag titles, but you know, to make new, new threat, that's how I see it, new threat for them. But yeah, SmackDown was okay. I mean, SmackDown is way better than Raw. That's been proven every single week in 2021. But this draft is definitely going to help a lot of the recurring problems. I think WWE is waiting for the draft to kind of see who goes where to then just fix bold shows. And it should be interesting. You know, I'll probably do like a top five of where people should go. And I'll post that next week. But yeah, so here's my SmackDown review. I just be Rampage. And then you'll have my Extreme Rules review which might also be filmed in the shower. <sighs> I got a little college life sour. Right guys? So yeah. Also, make sure to check out my Extreme Rules predictions. It's the video before this. But yeah, that's it for me. You'll see me later. Or in another video. Bye bye.